How do? Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, we're going to have a look at a knife that has been sent to me for some customization work. And we'll have a look at it as it is now, and then I'm going to go away and work on it. And then in part two, you'll see the work that I've done. So let's get into this thing and let's see what we're working with today, shall we? This is a knife from Arno Bernard Knives out of South Africa. South Africa! I know, I butchered it, but you can't help yourself. You've got to try the South African accent, haven't you? Come on, give me a break. Two for effort. Whatever. Jeez. Jesus. Jeez, he can't do accents, this guy. Don't quit your day job. No, nope, I will not. So let's have a look. Arno Bernard Knives. Comes in a nice uh, cloth pouch with the old logo stamped on it. Pretty cool. This is the certificate of authenticity with the guarantee. Pretty cool. Comes with a Krugerrand. How cool is that? That is awesome. A Krugerrand. A rand. Then on the back, it gives you the info. It's a tie folder. Titanium, obviously. S35VN on the blade. Established 1979. I believe that it's not a custom knife, that it's a uh, high-end production company, kind of like Chris Reeve knives. You know, they make really high-end stuff, more expensive production knives. But still very nice. So, this is the knife. It's a definitely a gentleman's folder, no pocket clip. Nice blade, very sharp. Loads of tape on it, so that is clearing up. But the blade itself looks... It looks like it doesn't need any work at all. Rounded spine. It's a button lock. And the button and the thumb stud have got those blue crystals inside them, as you can see there, to match the blue milled portion of the handles. Or handle. Handle sides. Nice pivot. Standoffs. And that's it, really. So let's see how messed up this knife is. It is scratched to hell. I mean, look at that. Look at those scratches there and all on here. Look at that. Oh, my goodness me. This thing has had some use and abuse. Oh, have you been abused, mate? Oh, do we need to sort you out? Poor thing. <laughs> I don't know. Some people... Don't know how to look after them, do they? Oh, you haven't been looked after, have you? You've been sent to... You've been sent to AJ. No, you've been sent to Mr. Fused. To get yourself sorted out. We'll see what we can do for you, mate. All right. All right, buddy. We'll see what we can do. All right, mate. Cheers for that. Um, I'm so knackered. Uh, my owner's not looked after me. Can you... You think you can do something, mate? Listen, buddy. I'm going to do my best for you. I swear to God. Tell you what, I'm going to make you feel like a million bucks. You deserve it, bud. Oh, cheers, mate. I really appreciate it. Actually, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, buddy. Hey, it's my pleasure. So as you can see, yeah, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this thing. I don't know if I'm going to change the colour in, in there. I don't know if I'm going to... I have no idea. Polish the edges... One thing I did notice, besides how knackered it is, how scratched up it is, I mean, overall, it's, you know, it's fine. It's just, it, you know, oh, you know, it still, it works fine. Solid lockup. Yeah. It's just cosmetic. That's all it is. One thing I did notice, though, was the inner edges of the handle have a sharpness to them. I noticed that straight away. And I hate that hate when you can feel sharpness on the inside of the handle. I, I said that in another video, actually. I think it was on the Steve Skiff knife. Um, easily rectified. 
Oh, and just as an update, uh, that video, the Steve Skiff video, if you watched it, where I did bring up the sharpness on the inside, I did get an email, uh, not an email, a message uh, from his daughter, um, appreciated the, the video, uh, and said that he had now started to tackle that. You know, he, he was rounding them off. You know, it wasn't me who made him do it, who, who made the suggestion. He's been doing it for a while. So obviously there's a certain amount of accomplices, you know, maybe some of the older ones that have the sharpness and now he's started to you know round them off chamfer them whatever so that's great news brilliant uh, so that's uh, that's even close to perfection on that knife if you saw it almost perfection i would say nearly very very nearly perfection then so this one yes has got a bit of sharpness so we might round that off when we're working on the handles uh, like i say i've got no idea what i'm going to do with this thing but i'm sure it's going to be fun and we'll see what we can do with it see uh See what we can transform it into. Maybe just spruce it up. Maybe make it look exactly the same, but just spruce it up. Or maybe do something completely different. I have no idea. We shall see. Nice though. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm pretty impressed with it. For a gentleman's folder, you know, it's thin, lightweight, sharp as chisel. Really sharp. Really utility friendly. Gentleman's carry knife. Hmm. I like it. I do. So you deserve it, mate. I'm going to look after you. Let's get to let's get to work and let's see what we can do for you. All right, bud. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, mate. Let's do this. I'll see you in part two, guys. Stay around. Stick around. Welcome to part two, and it's been a few days, been working on the knife, finally got it finished, so let's have a look around it, shall we? I wanted to give the knife a user-friendly finish while at the same time giving it some beautification. So I started by polishing the handles up. You saw how deep the scratches were along the handles. Besides scratches on the handles, there was a lot of machining marks around the outer edges and a lot of machining marks in the milled lines themselves. Now I knew that I wanted to re-anodize the milled lines. The blue that was originally anodized was a very light blue and I didn't like it, so I wanted to do something a little different. So I started by polishing the handles up, seeing how deep the scratches went. Once I did a first pass with the polish, I then sanded any of the deeper scratches out and then repolished. So prepared the handles. Then what I did was I had to go in and sand out the milled lines. You have to prepare the milled lines for anodization by making sure that you remove the original color and you make sure that the metal is all consistent and ready to go because if you anodize it and you've got some kind of an inconsistency in there you might get an area where it doesn't anodize properly so you might have these beautiful colors and then you might have a section that doesn't anodize at all and it's kind of a gray color uh, it's really strange what happens sometimes you just get these anomalies so you have to really prepare the metal properly before you anodize it so i sanded everything out sanded the the, the, the lines out um, repolished everything and once I was happy that I knew that the anodization would take and it would work properly, that's when I did the first anodization pass. And I went for a blue finish with some uh, purple. Now the front took more of a blue with some purple in the middle, as you can see there. And then the back uh, was a bit more purple and even going into a little bit of bronze in the middle. But it's the same kind of a process. It's kind of the edges are more blue and then you've got a bit of a different color in the center so this side is a little bit more vibrant in terms of color contrast there's a little bit of a different color contrast you see like the purples in there and kind of going to like some different purples into almost a bronze there see that really like it really really turned out nice on that side and then this side it's a little bit more closer to the original uh, more blues into the lighter blues but in the middle you can still see 
the tints of purple coming through. So that worked out really well. So once I was happy with that, then obviously the rest of the handle was polished up and anodized, but I wanted to give it a more user-friendly finish. So I wanted to give it a nice tumble, which is what I did. But before I did that, I wanted to do something a little bit different around the pivot. So what I did was, if you have a look, you should be, if I can get, there you go. Uh, get a good good view of it. If I can, uh, there we go. Uh, There we go. So as you can see, it's got kind of this starburst pivot collar effect. Okay. So what I did was I got a larger pivot and I messed up the edges so it wasn't a, a, a perfect circle. And then I placed that pivot on the handle and bolted it in from behind. And then I tumbled the handles. Once the tumbling process was finished, I removed the larger pivot screw and underneath was the original anodization, which in this area was purple. And it had this kind of, as you can see, it's polished from the original polish. And the outer edge has kind of got this jagged effect. And I thought that really matched in well with the, um, the tumble effect. And I thought it came out really nice. So it looks different from it. Some, some, uh, sometimes you look at it and it's much more circular. Uh, so, so other places you can't really see it. Like there, you can't see it at all. And then when you catch it in the light, it just, it's got this really cool effect to it. There you go. I just think it looks just a little bit different. Something a little bit more, you know, unique. That's not overpowering. That just gives it a nice effect. This kind of, it's almost like a flaming effect at the edges. So I was really happy with how that came out. Uh, only did it on the one side, as you can see. And then the rest of the handle had a nice tumble. And then what I did was I then went round the outer edge and removed all the machining marks, so sanded all the machining marks away, and then polished them up. Then I finally re-anodized and went for a bronze. So that wasn't going to affect the purple around the pivot. It wasn't going to affect any of these colors. And the tumbled area ended up with this deep matte bronze, as you can see. And then the edges have a much more vibrant, vibrant, vibrant bronze because of the different finishes. Tumbled, polished. So they're both bronze, both anodized at exactly the same time, just a different color and a different finish. So that polished bronze matches the polished milled lines. And then the matte finish gives a very user-friendly uh, finish to the knife. Uh, you know, it, it gives it that ability to be able to use it <clears throat> and not worry about scratching it. So I think it came out really nice. Something a little different. I also cleaned up the blade for him. You saw how knackered the blade was as far as all the tape and everything else on it give the spine a bit of a polish and there you go you know you kind of catch that pivot collar look at that and that purple matches up nicely with the purples so i think everything matches up nicely flows well there you go look at that Yep, I think it came out pretty nice. The way that I polished the milled lines, it kind of shimmers and glimmers. See all that? So I think that came out real cool as well. So, you know, yeah, it's got, it's beautified, but at the same time, it's, it's user friendly. So he can stick it in his pocket, he can use it, enjoy it and not worry about scuffing it up. There we go, guys. Okay. Thanks for joining me on a, another before and after video. I appreciate you checking it out.
All right. Let's get together again soon. Check you later.